And God said, let there be light. Still Mills with the Dizzle, man. Off to work to start my motherfucking morning, man. <laughs> but, um, I just heard that Tyson and Holyfield allegedly signed a, signed a deal to get their fight jumping in May. We got to talk about that, man. I don't think I've done a video on Mike Tyson yet, man. Um, as y'all know, dude is the GOAT to me. Tyson is this, the, 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 the greatest. Like, I... I I think as far as skill set is concerned, there's no heavyweight that he couldn't have beat throughout history. And I think as far as skill set is concerned, athleticism, defense, and offense, a good a good combination of defense and offense, the footwork, I, I just think there's no heavyweight that was able to do that on that level ever. Ever. You know, I know um cuz the motto, he you know, he trained Floyd Patterson, you know what I'm saying? Peace to him as well. God rest the dead, but I just, I don't think, I don't think Floyd Patterson was as, as, as like, he just wasn't, he wasn't Mike. He wasn't Mike. Um, Smoking Joe Frazier was another one. A lot of, you know, a lot of, you know, bobbing and weaving and head movement. And then, you know, he roll up under a shot and come up on you with that left hook and clip you with it and you gone. You know what I'm saying? But he just, he wasn't Mike neither, man. The difference was Mike just his, you know, his upper body movement was a lot more, a lot more, it was a lot faster, you know what I'm saying? He was able to dip from side to side faster than they were. And that makes a huge difference. That makes a huge difference. That's going to make, if, that's going to make up whether or not, you know, how many punches you're able to slip on just dipping to one side. You know, how much faster you can close distance, you dig? With you know, with the, with the, with, the, with your feet, you know, he, he had faster feet and faster hands and faster, a lot more slicker head movement than you know than all 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 heavyweights. No heavyweight has moved you know like Tyson. People have moved like them, so I'll take that back, but not as efficient as Tyson. However, he did underwhelm in his career, starting with Joe Frazier, not Joe Frazier, but uh, Buster Douglas. He did underwhelm. We gotta, you know, we gotta be real on that, man. He was, you know, he shouldn't have lost to Buster. But I mean, people, what people fail to realize also in that is, you know, you can't, you're not gonna be able to perform well if you don't train well. And Tyson was, you know, at that point, you know, you were a 19 year old man, 19, 20 years old, the baddest man on the planet. There, I mean, there was very few people on earth who could deal with Mike Tyson at that time. I don't give a fuck what combat. I don't care if you did kickboxing, Muay Thai, Jiu Jitsu. There are very few people who could deal with Mike Tyson at that time. Very few. Out the billions of people on earth. <laughs> Mike Tyson was top 10 in the, out, of, out of 6 billion people on earth. And even that's argumentative. You, know? <laughs> you can say he top 5. You know what I'm saying? Number 1. You dig? But. You still most definitely have to train, man, because you dig. I mean, Buster Douglas gets a lot of flack. You know, he's had some, you know, he's he, he's had he's been in some tough fights, but he was supposed to be a sacrificial lamb for Mike, you know, to go in there for Mike and, you know, to keep Mike, you know, continue his title defenses and go on to greener pastures. But Mike was also, you know, he wasn't the, the most mentally strong and mentally competent, man. He was, it was easy to, and not, from a fighter's paradigm, you dig what I'm saying? Like, fighters couldn't get to him. A lot of people say he's weak-minded, like, oh, Ali would have gotten his head and didn't know he wouldn't have. The, what got to Mike more so it was the glitz and the glamour and the women. Ali had the wrong reprodu reproductive organ to be able to, you know, seep inside the men's of a Mike Tyson. Women was his weakness. Glitz and glamour was his weakness. Now, granted, you know, given his come up, you know him coming up in Brownsville and all that, him getting beat up. You know his, you know, just his mother giving uh, just a really traumatic experience. Now, granted, there's plenty of people who have had those experiences growing up, and they grew up to be, you know, stand-up men and women. But everybody's circumstance is different. Everybody's gonna, you know, you know, uh, 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 um, a child being molested. He may handle that, or she may handle that a lot better than the next child. You understand what I'm saying? So, 
Mike was a dude who just, it, he just, you know, he, he had to go through a, you know, you listen to them stories up there in the Catskill, and it was like, Jesus Christ, he just, he was still a handful, even though he was up under some, you know, structure, up under a family structure, because the model, and him even being locked up, you know what I'm saying, Cusk was one of the dudes who was really able to get a, you know, get a hold of him and say, man, you need to chill out and really install uh, 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 what's the word? Uh, uh, Self-esteem in him. You know, you're gonna be the youngest heavyweight champion ever. You did, and, he, and, and him wanting that and earning for that, and he, that's why he worked as hard as he did. You know, when the when the um, when the police officer beat him up in the gym, said, "Man, you get your act together. I'll take you to where I learned this shit at." You dig? That was that that focused him. But even with him being focused, he still was a wild cat. You dig what I'm saying? So you carry that over into your adult years and the main, you know, your main pillar dies before you're even able to have your first fight. It's just, it's a, it's a, it's a recipe for disaster. So I don't think he ever really faced them demons. He never really, he never got the, he, you know, he never sat down with the proper people to face them demons, man. Cuz died when he was, what, 17, 18 years old, 19? And I have this theory, I said, if Cuz D'Amato lived at least 10 years, in, not 10 years, but 10 fights into Mike Tyson's career, he's the greatest, he's, it, he's arguably the greatest heavyweight ever. On skills, I think he's the greatest, but just on resume, you know, he was one of the dudes who could have rivaled a Muhammad Ali. And so, you know, you leave, you know, you're focused enough to where, all right, let me fulfill Custom Model's dream. If he's not going to be here with me in the physical, the least I can do is become the youngest heavyweight champion. And once you do that, you somewhat begin to unravel. And with his, un and man, did he unravel, man, you know, chaotic and fucking turbulent marriages and all that and just partying and just, I don't need to train. He said, I remember watching some of him, he was like, I'm 19 years old, I'm in the bar and it's 20, you know, dudes in their 20s and 30s and he barking on him. You want to step outside? You know, he's 19. Imagine the power of that, man. You ain't even got your grown man strength yet. You know what I'm saying? You 220 and 212 and 19 and you the heavyweight champion of the world. You trying to, man, step, what's up, my nigga? You trying to step outside? We can run that if you want. There's a power in that. You know what I'm saying? So naturally, and it's like, man, I don't need to train. These niggas can't fuck with me. They, they cannot fuck with me. I'm that nigga. So you come to training camp when you want to come to training camp. You train for as long as you want to train. And a lot of cats is like, man, I've been doing this shit for 10 plus years, bro. So I don't want to be in the gym putting my body through these, you know what I'm saying, this pain and just, you know, a thousand crunches and push-ups and, and, and the medicine ball and jumping rope and hitting the bag and sparring. I don't, I don't need to do all that to beat these niggas, man. I'm better than them. So instead of doing a thousand crunches, I'll do 500. And no medicine ball, because these niggas can't fuck with you. So your arrogance begins to come into play. And then next thing you know, you get knocked out and sparring. I, I'll be alright when, when I'm up under the lights. You know what I'm saying? When, 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 when it's showtime, I'll be good money. You dig? And that led to him getting battered by Buster Douglas. And even with him getting battered by Buster Douglas, he arguably got Buster Douglas arguably got a late count. He arguably got a late count. I'm glad he didn't. Because if he didn't, Mike would have stayed on the field. He would have never got back in the gym. But the thing is this, when you're at that level, you got Mike is a small heavyweight. Mike is one of the smaller heavyweights in history. Like legitimate heavyweight. So at that time, you know, like when you went, by the time he fights, you know, Lennox Lewis, he should have, you know, he should have been had a, let me see, his biggest fights were Holyfield and Lewis. Those were the top dogs in his era, besides him. So, you fighting Holyfield, you did, like, you're not gonna have that athleticism, and you're not gonna have that speed throughout your career. It's just, it's just not, it, you know, it's just not gonna happen. That's why it's so amazing that Manny Pacquiao is still as fast as he is, but for Tyson, you gotta think everything that you have to deal with. You know, um, he's, what, Four inches taller than Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao wasn't fighting six foot five and 
six foot six dudes. You dig what I'm saying? So I think with that level of skill and fighting in that division, and your athleticism is eventually gonna dissipate, man. So you would it, it would have been other intangible like your IQ. You dig what I'm saying? How to you don't have the upper body, the speeding up in your upper body that you once did, man. So you'll, you know, you'll have a better gauge of of, 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 of timing with your opponents. You have a better gauge of timing and, and their punch selection and their punch variety. So you'll know how to navigate those waters when you get in front of them. So you ain't gotta, you know, slip all brazy, you know what I'm saying? Like how he would normally do, you know, slipping six and seven shots. Nah, nah. Now you just you know you're just a better, more refined fighter, like Floyd, with his computer when he became you know up there in age. He didn't have to rely on combination punching to keep niggas off of him. He relied on his computer. Tyson would have needed to do that. He kinda, and, 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 and can consistently train. He couldn't have took. He couldn't have got lazy and complacent because he already had naturally he was already at a disadvantage. So even him being in that Buster Douglas fight with him taking that time off that he took off due to him being arrogant, that hindered him 15 years down the line when he finally fought Lennox Lewis. That hindered him then. Because you, you know, he wouldn't need at that moment to stay, you know, just, just now when you when you do something, your brain naturally progresses it. You know, you're not, you're, you know, you're naturally gonna progress. Your brain is gonna be able to retain and compute information a lot faster than what you would have years ago. Like I don't speak, I'm not fluent in Spanish whatsoever, but I know a, I understand a lot. I've actually had conversations with Mexicans who don't speak really good English. They, they don't and I have to be comfortable with you of course to do this man but I've, I've held conversation literally he's speaking to me in a little bit of English that he knows and I'm speaking to him in a little bit of Spanish that I know so naturally just and my wife is Mexican and Guatemala so me being around it naturally I, I, I can understand where the conversation is going I know what they're talking about when they say certain shit all right that's what they are talking about right there and I have an idea of where the conversation is going even if I can't respond but because I've been around it so long, when I hear certain words, even the, um, the conjugations of the words, oh, that's what they're talking about. That's what, okay, cool. So when you talk about fighting and with Mike Tyson, he would have needed that way, you know, him fighting Buster Douglas, and that, that time when he fought Buster Douglas, he needed that, he needed to be training in that very moment for him to be able to compute information and compute an opponent 15 years down the line when he fought Lennox Lewis. He needed that. He needed that, but he got complacent. He needed that. You're not going to have the athleticism and the head movement to be able to get out of the way of six and seven punches. You're not going to have that when you're in your mid-30s. LeBron James is another miraculous specimen of a man. How the fuck are you able to do that? And, he, and even his body is starting to catch up with him. He got a high ankle sprain. You dig? So that shit, that just, that exemplifies my point that much more. So when you talk about Tyson, he needed that, just that little bit of, you know, that little bit, that little period where he got complacent at. He needed that for, you know, 15 years down the line. And then after that, he gets, you know, he gets serious again. But now here come the women. Now you're facing rape charges and you got to go and sit down and do a bid. You dig what I'm saying? And... Holyfield is right on the other end of that bid. So it was just entirely too much time spent away from training and spent from away from the ring for you to be able to deal with the Evander Holyfield. Now, Evander Holyfield, they fought, I forget, you know, Pinklin Thompson and, or Thomas. They had a lot of common opponents, and Tyson was just blowing through them opponents. And Holyfield wasn't. Holyfield wasn't. You dig, but it's it's really weird, man. Cause I, you know some people play up to their competition and down to their competition. And with Holyfield, I think Holyfield was active enough to where I right, cool. I'm win. I'll you know I'll squeak out a victory on these fights. But when I see Tyson, it, I'm on his ass. It's weird, you know the human the human body is weird like that, man. I, I you know some shit is just unexplainable, man. But he was around enough to where he could still keep his he could still keep his tools sharp. And so when he went and he seen Mike, he was able to put his all into that with no time off. And he had success.
Tyson needed all the all those all those fights or whatever, all this training, all the sparring, all the everything that he was missing through the prison stints and due to him just being arrogant and dealing with these you know these women who's just throwing themselves at him and he can't deal with i'm not used to this type of lifestyle i'm not used to women throwing themselves at me so he getting i'm on man that's a hell of a drug women throwing themselves at you that's a hell of a drug i, I understand why men cheat i don't have that problem they don't throw themselves at me they never have and i'm cool with that but i've seen brothers i got homies who's like yo man shorty Shorty throwing it. It's a drug, bro. It, it really is. And when you're dealing with a, you know, a, a, a mentally kind of tarnished man, that's the effects you're gonna, you know, is gonna have. Oh man, yo, I'm finna go slide this bribe right here. The minute the chick get the bat in their eyes at you and lower and they pitch to you, you talking about giving them your last name, you know, all that, all that extra shit, you know, with the Robin Givens and everything. So he was like, bro. Uh, hey, and that marriage turned turbulent, and it was just it, Mike's life was just a mess. And then you know you with you know the the nation of Islam coming in and Don King and forcing him to fire Kevin Rooney. Kevin when Kevin Rooney when Kevin Rooney got fired, it was over. It was one hundred percent over. It was one hundred percent over because it was nobody. For, it was nobody that he came up with to keep him somewhat rooted. Teddy Atlas left when he was. 15, 16 years old. Kevin Rooney stayed around. And Kevin Rooney got him into the place that he ended up being as well, being the youngest heavyweight champion ever. They forced him to clip Kevin Rooney. You gotta get rid of him. And these are supposed to be the brother, you know, upstanding brothers with the nation of Islam. And Don King, we already know what time it is with him. So he was it was a wrap for him after that. That man was going on fumes. So, you know, I, I do think Tyson underwhelmed in his career. But if you're not going to, if you're not going to uh, 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 highlight everything that led up to him underwhelming, then I think you're being disingenuous as far as Tyson is concerned. Because people hate when I, you know, I, I, I think Tyson stops Ali. They, they hate when I say that because of, you know, who Tyson beat and how he beat them. And Tyson, or not Tyson, but Ali. Ali wasn't never, well, you know, five years, what, two to five years, or so, I forget how long they suspended his boxing license, but you don't think he was still in the gym training? And that just speaks to the greatness of him, you dig what I'm saying? But Tyson is, we, you know, we can't forget, you can't ignore that. You can't ignore that. You can't. You can't ignore what happened with Tyson, you can't do it. So, and but like I said before, man, I think I, I like Lennox and Holyfield's chances in beating Mike Tyson still. I do. I think he still had a shot at beating them. Or I, I, I think he, they still had a shot at beating him. They did. They, they had a shot at beating him still. But, um, I was still favor Tyson like I said before two out of three if they was to go best out of three I'd still favor Tyson two out of three if Tyson was still if he was training the way that he was training with kept before he got before I, <clears throat> the Trevor Burbick Tyson you know what I'm saying the the the, the Tony Tucker Tyson the uh, 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 the Tyrell Biggs Tyson that Tyson of the 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 Jose Rebalta Tyson yes that is the greatest heavyweight ever. You know what I'm saying? But people have an argument that I can't go against. So I understand when people say that he underwhelmed and he wouldn't have been able to beat a lot of the, you know, like the, you know, the 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 Frasers and the Foremans and the Ali's because he couldn't deal with the Lennox Lewis's and the Evander Holyfield. But if you're not gonna if you're not going to highlight the flaws and the reasonings behind him not being able to have success in those fights, then you're just being really disingenuous and that's how I'm feeling about it, man. But we gon' we gonna get into this breakdown of uh Tyson and Holyfield later, man. So like and subscribe. Let me know if I'm burnt the fuck out, man, or if I'm on to something, man. Peace.